Hello, 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 and thank you, everybody, for tuning in to another episode of Outside the Box. Of course, again, today I have a very special guest, like I always have, and a very special topic that I am very, very eager to talk about. Um, before I do that, I'll just introduce myself for those of you who might be seeing my show for the first time. Uh, my name is Sage the Coach, also known as Stephanie K. I am a Christian author, as well as a certified life and relationship coach. And um, my show Outside the Box aims to help people see that God is bigger than our boxes because a lot of the time when we don't, we're not able to see outside of our boxes. We miss God. We miss our blessing. We miss growth. We miss a lot of other things. And so um, for me, that's really has been the essential part of my own Christian walk is kind of seeing outside of my own thinking and what I expected and what I wanted and things like that. And so it's very, very important to think outside of your box. Um, but before I bring my guests on or even introduce the topic that we will be discussing today, I do want to mention that this past week I reached 900 followers. I am very, very happy and super excited about that. I've been doing this show since May and to be at 900 followers already before the end of the year um, is just really great progress to me and I really appreciate it. So I want to thank you guys for tuning in to my show, for showing your support for sharing, for inviting me people to my page and to and to actually just to continue to do that. Again, I get much more um, feedback from people or much more activity when people invite people to my page as opposed to just sharing it. So but if you want to share it and that's easier for you, that's fine. But if you want to take that extra step and invite people to my page, you can do that under the community tab. Just scroll down. You will see a uh, a button to click on to invite people to the page and do that and help me continue to spread my empowering and positive messages because we need more of that in this life with all the other things crazy things that are going on so um but enough about that uh i want to dive into the topic today we're going to be talking about the destruction of adultery um again i like to cover topics that are not normally discussed in the average christian circles and i think this is one of them um, especially if you caught my show last week, we kind of talked about how there are a lot of things in marriage that are not really talked about like they should be, um, especially amongst Christian women. And so this this topic is one of those things that needs to be talked about a little bit more. And so to, to really dive into this uh, discussion, I have a special guest with me, Prophetess Rhonda. And I'm not going to try to say her last name. I'll ask her her last name when she comes on because I don't want to mispronounce it. I'm really good at mispronouncing stuff. And so I'll bring her on. So I'll go ahead and bring her on now. Hello, hello. And thank you for joining me. Hello. How are you? I'm thank fine. You and how are you doing? Oh, no problem. I, I thank you for coming on here and sharing your story. Now, um, I know you probably heard me say a little bit ago about your last name. I didn't want to say it incorrectly, and I forgot to ask you how to pronounce it beforehand. So can you tell me, what, how do you pronounce your last name? Oh, absolutely. It's Mustafa. Okay, that's what I thought. Mustafa. I just... <laughs> Most people yeah. think about the Lion King. Yeah. Yeah. Think yeah. of my last name. But yeah, that's... Enough, my last name means chosen one. Okay, so is that your your last name you were given by your family or did you change your name so that was my married name okay uh, Mustafa and I kept the name okay uh, after my divorce okay uh, because we had children and so it just seemed uh necessary and I actually when I initially uh, married my 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 husband I did not like the last name um, <laughs> at all it grew on me Mm. And, um, and so the fact that, um, you know, it means chosen one, um, I, I felt it was apropos. God has a sense of humor. <laughs> <laughs> so where's your husband from? I mean, if you don't mind me asking or your ex-husband, because of course that's not an American name. So. Right. 
he's actually from he's from the 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 u.s uh oh. philadelphia pennsylvania that's where he's from oh I'm wow there and uh very proud um pennsylvanian okay uh, wow okay i thought it was uh an african name or something yeah yeah okay. no yeah. <laughs> he was born okay. with it. It's actually uh on his birth certificate too. Okay, wow. Wow. So um so let's dive into this conversation today. I know there are some people watching that are really, you know, people who are will tune into this is people who need to hear what we're gonna talk about. And so um, you know, I wanna kind of, you know, dive into it and hopefully give them some insight or some healing or some direction or whatever they're going through in their life. And and I want to mention that this is adultery kind of is rooted in betrayal, but betrayal can be experienced in a lot of different areas. So even if you're not watching for adultery in general and you just experience some deep betrayal, I'm sure there are things that we're going to talk about that can be helpful to you as well. And so but before we get started, um, I know you talked a little bit about yourself already, but can you let everybody know who you are, kind of what you do and things like that? I see you don't have your title prophetess on there. Um, but, you know, I introduce you as prophetess. And so if you can just explain that a little bit as well, just let people know who you are. Yes, yes. So, I mean, I am a prophet. Um, I don't, I'm not into titles. I walk in the office of a prophet. Um, but I usually like to just go by my my name, sister. Mm. I don't care what you call me. Mm. My name, uh, Rhonda. I'm okay with that, but you know, the office from a spiritual perspective, the office that I walk in is a, is the office of a prophet. Mm -hmm. um, I uh, I have a ministry that the Lord has given me. He gave me a ministry um, over ten years ago. God in a heart uh, outreach, um, and it's it's really a conglomerate of of many different um, uh, smaller ministries. Um, it actually started out um, helping the homeless. Um, because that's where my heart is at, really. Um, my heart is for the outcast, um, the downtrodden, the broken, um, the abandoned. Mm. Um, that, that, that's where my heart is at. So um, it was, you know, highly likely. Even God gave me the name, God in the heart. Because mm. when he's in the heart, you know, he compels us to love. It, it, he mm. compels us to do things mm. that wouldn't typically do within in and through ourselves out mm. of his spirit so um yeah so uh, you know it's it's kind of broadened especially um after uh you know this traumatic experience that you know my family um it endured um into more of a um you know prophetic prayer um uh because prayer is essential and also more or less um you know, families um, really um, saving um, the family um, from from a serious um, atrophy. Like you know, fam the families. Uh, you know, the, the the design God's design for family is 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 broken. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. and, and, and ironically, more so in the church. <laughs> yeah in, in in the world so exactly yeah um, you know I, I i actually feel honored um it might sound really really um crazy uh to, to 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 the carnal mind but i actually feel honored that god chose me to endure what what i went through what my children went through um to be able to help someone else to be mm -hmm. able to help other families um, to be able to preclude, you know, divorce or uh, preclude broken homes, um, you know, by by uh, the power of the Holy Spirit. So yeah, yeah, that's yeah. A little bit about me. Yeah. Um, so um, you, how long have you been in ministry? Because I think that's important part too. Um, it seems like you have an extensive experience in ministry. So can you just talk about a little bit how long you've been in ministry now? I've been in ministry now probably about a little over 15 years. Wow. Um, you know, I've all, I've known, um, I knew there was something different about me even when I was a child. And if my parents were here, they'd probably tell you the same thing because I just, I didn't fit in. I was never, you know, one to kind of go with the crowd. Um, 
you know, at an early age, um, before I even knew I was a prophet or before I even knew anything, I used to be able to see in the spirit. I mean, I would see spirits. I would see, you know, demons. I would see angels. I mean, I would see all of those things. Um, actually, to the point where I was really scared. I used to have a very bad bed wetting problem because of oh, the wow. I would see at such an early age. Wow. Um, and, and because I didn't understand it, my parents were you know, prophetic. They raised me, you know, in the church, but they didn't know anything about the stuff that, you know, you were that, talking about, yeah. you know or, or any of that. So it wasn't like they could counsel me on, you know, these things that were going on. So I really didn't um, uh, really kind of um, go through the process of really understanding what a prophet was until much later in life. Mm. Uh, and that was after a series of all kinds of rebellions. Mm. And, 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 and just sin. Mm. I mean, I'm telling you, I went through it. If, if, if Paul was the, uh, the chief sinner, I was a close runner up. <laughs> <laughs> and I mean, and you know, and we'll get to the topic really soon, really yeah. quickly. I mean, cause there's a lot in there that I would, I can even think of to do other shows about women in the ministry. Cause I know you have some stuff going on there, uh, recognizing your gifts and all that type of stuff. But, um, but you know it's just amazing how god can use the things that and you know and i think sometimes people miss that when it says that he um turns he can um what is the scripture all things work together for our good and so i think sometimes people don't understand that because it's kind of like they just don't want the bad stuff to happen in the first place Right. And but when he says that he can use all things for our good, is that even the bad stuff he can make, he can bring good out of it, and the good that he can bring out of it will outweigh the bad stuff that happened. And so, yeah, you you might have been the chief the chief center. Um, I have my own issues and stories too, but it's really amazing and yeah. something that reminds me every day about the goodness of God when I think about. Mm -hmm how he turned all those things around and helped me to become the person that I am today. So it's, it's, you know, it's just um, nice to think about. Okay. So, yeah. So another thing the Lord showed me when he, when he gave me the book, uh, counterfeit covenant and actually when he um, told me to expound in ministry and name it counterfeit covenant, um, that's where the name came from. The Lord gave it to me. I didn't think of it. I, you know, mm -hmm. he gave it to me. He, he gave me the scripture. Um, he sent me to John 9. And um, in, in this, just to give you a little backdrop, in this, um, Jesus heals a blind man, and the blind man was born blind. But the first thing that the disciples asked him was, who sinned? Was it his parents or was it the man? And Jesus, what I found that was so extraordinary, um, that he he rebuked them and he said um he did not sin uh, he said this was for the glory of god so in other words the purpose of this man's blindness was that the works of god should be revealed in him mm. and sometimes when we're going through trauma sometimes when we're going through you know our own trials and tribulations we want to dismiss it we want to hurry up and get through it but we don't understand that like Job, sometimes, my God, it comes for the purpose that God, the works of God should be revealed. The works of God, sometimes God has to draw us closer and he uses those weaknesses and he uses those things because the Bible says he's close to the brokenhearted and he saves mm -hmm. those who are crushed in spirit. So when he draws us, when we, when we are brokenhearted, when we're crushed in spirit, we know that he is close to us. But at that time, you don't know that. Mm -hmm. The only way that you can know that is when you are in that position, when mm -hmm. you are broken hearted. And mm -hmm. so, you know, he, he showed me that, you know, again, through his word and just really just being broken and, and completely transparent before the father and allowing him to heal those broken pieces. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And so for those of you who are not sure what... Um, Rhonda is talking about she and because the topic that we're speaking on today which is adultery is coming from a book that she's actually in the process of writing called counterfeit covenant and when did the book will be released Rhonda July 2022 
Okay, so in July of next year. And yes. so um, so if you guys, you know, like what she's talking about here or you can resonate or want any further information about what we'll be discussing here, keep, definitely keep an eye out for her book coming out next year. And I will put the link to her website and uh, Facebook page below so you can reach out to her directly if you want to. And so, so let's kind of go back to the beginning because I know a lot of people want to know, you know, about your story and what happened. So can you talk about how long you were married and then just kind of walk us into how you found out and, you know, just the whole story around the, the adultery that happened? Okay, yeah, sure. So, yeah, so I was married for over 20 years. I was with my um, my my ex-husband for over 20 years. And, and how old were you guys when you got married? Oh, I don't even remember. It was in our 20s. Um, okay. Yeah. I'm 45 now, so yeah, okay. <laughs> 23 okay. or 24. Um, yeah, okay. yeah. Um, I'd have to do the math. Let mm-hmm. me check my, my my son's age. But no, yeah, we mm-hmm. we we were we were together. Um, you know, over 20 years, we had a. Um, you know, we when we when we were dating, neither one of us. Um, had a relationship with the Lord and and and, and that's kind of what I want to get to is that okay. though I was raised in the church you know right ra- you know my parents did the best they could raise me in the church I didn't the, the church wasn't in me the, mm. you know the, Jesus wasn't in me still I mean yes there were deposits there but I, as far as like actually walking out you know, in the tenets of um, uh, our Christian faith, that wasn't necessarily the case because I was, you know, like I said, going through rebellion and uh, doing a lot of things that were, um, that, you know, most people would frown upon. Mm-hmm. And so when I met my my ex-husband, you know, we were, um, you know, both in the military. Um, we were actually both, both in the um, Army. And... Um, and we met on um, on a, a duty station in Korea, mm. and you know, we kind of dated uh, there and had a great time because you know why? Because I was still in the world. You know, mm. we were out there partying and doing whatever you know we thought we were big and bad enough to do. Um, mm. But the thing about that is, um, you know, that that's short lived. You mm. know, it's for a season, and mm. then next it comes death. Mm-hmm. And so, um, you know, we, we um, you know, got married. Uh, he, you know, he proposed to me um, on, on New Year's Day um, of 2000, um, 2001. No, 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 I'm sorry. Um, 2000. 2000. Mm-hmm. Um, and we were married in, um, in 2002, um, June 13, 2002. Mm-hmm. And so, um, and that was... You know that came. You know that was a tumultuous point to get to to get there. So again, we were very young, very immature, um, very much still in the world. Um, but at some point, um, I guess all those seeds that were deposited into me when I was younger started to come to harvest, mm. and I started desiring to know more of the Lord, and um, I, I really wanted to. Uh, draw closer to him and somehow he just took uh took my heart yeah you know, mm-hmm. when i said the lord took my heart he just he just pulled on me it's like he was pulling me and, w- and he wasn't pulling me he was drawing me he mm-hmm. was drawing mm-hmm. me um and you know when i started beginning to be more and more intrigued um with the lord my um my ex was still you know, kind of in the world. So at that point, we we were becoming drifted apart mm. because we, you know, when we were married, if you, if you want to say we were equally yoked because we both were in the world, neither one, yeah, or, you know, had a relationship with Jesus Christ. Mm. Um, but then we we started going separate ways, and so when I um, when I you know gave my life to Christ, um, you know, my 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 ex he, who was raised a muslim um mm. and so he um you know he he wanted to know a little bit about the lord but you know he still had some strongholds he still had some you know roots in islam and um so it wasn't it wasn't as easy 
as okay. it was to me okay. uh, to make that move. Um, but once I became, um, once I gave my life to Christ, you know, I really started to try my hardest to um, to really run my race. Mm. Um, but I had so much resistance. And here lies the problem. So the resistance came when, again, when I made that decision. And Jesus said that he didn't come to bring peace, but he came mm. to bring the sword. So he's going mm. to divide, right? Mm -hmm. And that's what happens when you make a choice, when you make a decision to follow Christ. Think it not strange when people start falling off or you start losing people or those exactly. who are with you and to walk with you through this walk. Exactly. Be, that's just not true. Mm. And so we didn't have um, the, the, the infidelity in our marriage. It didn't just happen with this last incident, which was really, you know, the emphasis for, um, for, for the book. But mm -hmm. we had some issues, you know, throughout the marriage. And why? Because we, how can two walk together unless they agree? Mm. We were not in agreement. Mm. We were going separate ways. He wanted mm. to be in the world, and I wanted to be outside of the world. I didn't want to do those things anymore. Wow! And so constant um, turbulence. Mm. So, well, can I can I ask you how long were you guys married before you committed to Christ? Oh, it was. It really wasn't long. Um, okay. Um, it was definitely before I had my daughter, who is fifteen now. Um, okay. So. So at with less than five years after you guys got married. Yeah, it was less. It was. It it, it may have been like three, okay. three years, so about okay. three years, and yeah, and I committed my life. Yeah. Okay. Okay. And so you're. So it sounds like you're saying that through you uh, committing your life to Christ and him not really being ready for that, you guys started to drift apart, which totally makes sense. Um, I kind of have a little bit of experience with that to some degree, not, you know, completely. Um, and because of that, there was some infidelity that kind of, you know, was in the picture even then. Is the, if, Am I reading you right? Am I understanding you correctly? Yes, we, okay. we had a series and, and let me just make this disclaimer, okay? Because this is very important. So, so I have forgiven my ex-husband. I am at a place where I'm at peace, and I have forgiven my ex-husband. I have even forgiven the strange woman, and I've had you know mistresses come to me and email me and ask for my forgiveness for things that they were doing with my husband. Oh wow! while I was married. So um, when I tell you I have been through, um, you know, the ringer, and let me tell you why I stayed, because I know uh, many people will probably wonder, well, why did you stay with a man who was, um, you know, a serial um, cheater, sounds like. A serial cheater, yeah. so to speak. And, and let me help you with something, because I knew that God had forgiven me of some things that were equally egregious mm. and so for me to to turn my nose up at my and my husband and say oh who does he think he is or whatever and knowing the things that i had done in my life there was no way that i could i could do that because and there was no way that i would not extend him grace mm. because the way i was looking at it like the Lord extended me grace and he could have, he actually, he showed me mercy mm. because he could have, you know, just taken me out mm. when I was in my sin. So I love my husband, my ex-husband unconditionally. Mm. So every time he would do that, I would, I would just um, pray and I would mm. ask God, you know, to deliver him, you know, from that. And, and, and I was graced to deal with that. Most women would not, they would be, I'm, I'm out of here, you know, mm, mm. Um, but I was graced to do that. And God showed me um, grace every time I forgave him, every time I forgave him, you know, that I felt like God was forgiving me mm. of the things that I was doing. So every mm. time I forgave him, every time he would do something, I felt like that. And then also I, I valued 
um, the family in mm. terms of the dynamics. And I mm. and I didn't want you know my children to to grow up in a in a in a broken home. Mm. I wanted them to have both their their parents in the home. So there were mm. a lot of reasons why I stayed, but mainly mainly the Bible tells us that love covers a multitude of sin, and so. Um, I was loving him, um, you know, through mm. his, his ugly and, and and the good. Yeah. So, I mean, I think you bring out a really good point, and I have, I'm sure I've talked about this before in past shows, is that, you know, the Bible does talks about the conditions under which you can divorce. And so I think a lot of times, and I don't want to go too much into that topic now, but a lot of times it especially in American Christianity, the sacredness of marriage is not um, there like it should be because people think that it's okay to get, if you're having problems, get divorced, you just marry somebody else. And actually, biblically, you're not supposed to do that. Once you get married, you're supposed to stay with that person unless they want to leave on their own if they're not a Christian or they abandon you um, Mm -hmm. or they cheat. And so, um, so those are, so the first thing is that as a Christian, if you get married, you are supposed to stay with that person for the rest of your life. Yeah. Um, God understands that there are some things going on in there that might you guys might have to separate and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. But you're not supposed to remarry somebody else. You're bound to that person. But mm-hmm. he does excuse that or he does allow the breaking of that covenant under very specific circumstances. Mm-hmm. And so I think something that i've talked about before is that yeah you can leave if the person cheats you can but you don't always have to it's not a matter of like Mm -hmm. okay you cheated up now i can go because you cheated Mm -hmm. um you really have to weigh it out and pray and ask god what to do about that situation because he can you know work he knows what the outcome is he knows where your partner's heart is he knows the circumstances surrounding why that happened Um, I did a show some weeks ago with a group of guys where they were talking about the things that they learned in marriage. And one of the guys, a minister Whitehead, talked about having Mm -hmm. went through divorce because his wife cheated and they eventually got remarried. And he said that he was responsible somewhat for her cheating before. Like he's not going to take complete blame, but he know he had played a role in that, that he should have been a little bit more attentive and things Mm -hmm. like that. And so I think that's a really big point. A good point that you're bringing out is that. Mm -hmm. Yes, God allows the breaking of marriage covenant in the event of cheating, but it's not like a hard, fast thing. And if you're able to extend, you know, love and mercy and forgiveness in those circumstances, that is way better than just leaving, you know. Um, And you can actually understand the heart of God a little bit more when you do that, because that's how he feels, like you're saying, when it comes to us and things like that. So, but you really have to pray. Like you really have to pray and have your own relationship with God to weigh it out and let and let God guide you on what the best thing to do is because He knows the heart of your spouse. So it's not always like, oh, you cheated, I'm gone. So I wanted to I'll point that out. Go and ahead. That, and, that, and that's true because you know God likens his relationship to us as a marriage. Mm. It's a covenant. Mm. So God has a covenant with us, He has a covenant with His children. And, um, you know, the, the breaking of that, if you see it all throughout the Bible, especially, you know, in the Old Testament where the Israelites would play harlot, play the harlot and playing the harlot. In other words, idolatry, you know, go chasing and serving other gods um, and forget all about our God, our mm. father, and, you mm. know, the creator of, you know, of, of all things. And so, you um, that's why the marriage is so important to him mm. because he the the marriage is supposed to be the institution that god the god's institution that he uses to show forth his glory exactly mm. and so when we when we when we break that covenant when we break outside of that and we enter into counterfeit covenants which is of the enemy um, we, you know, we, we don't glorify God. Um, in fact, you know, it, 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 it hurts God. And even Jesus said that, um, when Moses permitted the, the divorce, um, and yeah, earlier it was because their hearts were hardened, mm. you know, God's perfect will, you know, for marriages and homes is to forgive and restore. Mm. 
the, the, the devil wants to destroy. He hates marriages, um, especially those that are ordained by God. Mm. And just because my ex and I did not start out um, in terms of uh, uh, knowing God and, and equally yoked in terms of us both being, you know, Christians, doesn't mean that God did not ordain that union. Exactly. And, mm. um, and so God knows who to put. He, but remember, he knows our end from our beginning. Mm. So he knows everything we're going to do in this mm. life. Mm. And he knows the choices we're going to make. He knows who's coming into our path, etc. Mm. And so sometimes we can make choices that are permissive in God's permissive will, which means he'll allow it. Mm. But in his perfect will, he has a perfect plan. Mm. And it doesn't make sense to man. Mm. Because the carnal mind cannot uh, cannot comprehend. It's actually hostile to the things of God. Mm. So you don't understand what God is doing especially when you don't know him or you can't see him, mm. um, you know, you think it's something that's crazy, but he uses the foolish things of this world to confound the wise. So the the, the marriage that uh, my ex and I had was absolutely ordained by God. Mm. And I'm sure it broke God's heart um, that we divorced um, because so many times where I wanted to leave my, my ex-husband, the Lord, you know, he gave me a choice. He didn't take it away, but he 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 wanted me to stay and um, mm. to pray for him. So there there was a purpose for that. Okay, so I know the people watching will say, based on everything that you have said, but you ended up getting divorced. So can you talk about because you know even the conversation that you and I had before we did this show, um, I kind of knew about the 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 adultery that led to divorce i didn't know that there was a history of it so mm -hmm. what about this last one is what made you say you know what that's it well actually <laughs> whoo child mm. <laughs> uh this last one um uh brought on another element a deeper okay. and darker element of uh of um you know betrayal and um and witchcraft was was actually introduced into into this last um uh uh affair um as i stated my ex had you know a history of um you know of infidelity and so again you know you know loving him through that and just and I have my own issues too, so mm -hmm. this is not this mm -hmm. is not bash. It's certainly not to bash my ex because he is the father of my children, so I don't I would never bash him. Mm -hmm. But I, I do want to say that you know this last one was different from all the other you know events. This was different, and I couldn't put my finger on it because I didn't understand. Like Lord, what is this? And God had to give me through a series of dreams. Mm. Like I told you I'm a prophet and God speaks to me in visions. He speaks to me in, in dreams and, and I hear him. And, and he had to show me, God gave me, I have a dream journal. He gave me a series of dreams about this. And he was showing me the underlining um, uh, um, powers that were working. And let me say this. We don't fight against flesh and blood. Mm. We fight against principality, spiritual wickedness in high places, right? Rulers mm. of darkness, demonic powers. So that's how I was able to forgive my my ex and 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 the strange woman because I realized that neither one of them were my enemy. Mm. My real adversary was Satan. Mm. And, and that's who was, you know, kind of pulling their strings to 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 have them to come against. And I was thinking, like, why are you coming against little old me? Who am mm. I? What am I to you that you would want to come and destroy and, and essentially, you know, take my best friend and you know destroy my my home and you know, try to scatter my children and all of this? But it was absolutely Satan uh, because he did not he did not want um you know our marriage to or our family to to stand and 
Uh, he wanted to discourage my children. I raised them up in the admonition of the Lord. So he wanted to get to them suddenly. But mm. the witchcraft, which was, um, which was used, was deep and dark. It was, um, you know, uh, voodoo um, to, to bind my, my ex-husband uh, to to this strange woman. So um, you're saying that this now, you know, because in in Christian language, witchcraft can mean a lot of things. So you're not talking about witchcraft as in somebody's behavior or what somebody might say. You're talking about people actually trying to perform spells and oh, chants. And okay, you're talking about uh, the I'm, real. I'm talking about the actual uh, 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 act. In, in execution of 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 um, of, of, of uh, rituals and, mm. and things of that nature, um, I've had uh, people try to perform rituals on me and my mm. children, but because I'm I'm hidden under the refuge, my, my family is is covered under the blood of Jesus, and we're hidden. Um, they were unable to to touch us. Mm. And so they tried. You know, mm. I'm a prophet. So God's showing me this this thing. God showed me, you know, in a dream. I'll, I'll just give you an example of one dream. God showed me two women, one redhead and one blonde, and their backs were turned in the dream. And they had a picture of me, and they were burning one red candle and one black candle and they were taking the candle and they were putting it over my picture. They were putting it over my picture. And I was like, Lord, what is this? And God was showing me that what they were trying to do was send um, uh, 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 frustration. They were trying to, you know, target, you know, my finances, try to make turn my relationships, people turn away from me and all those they were doing a lot of things, but they were unsuccessful in all of their endeavors spiritually because God was fighting for me and 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 and, and they couldn't touch me. So they were frustrated. Mm-hmm. But the thing okay. is, go ahead. Go ahead. Well, I, I just wanted to be a little bit uh, clear. So when you say it was introduced this time with the with the last uh, act mm-hmm. of infidelity or whatever. I'm assuming that you mean from the woman that your husband was having an affair with. So she was into witchcraft. Well, she wasn't the only one. Um, oh. yeah, there, there, there were there. Um, so I don't know. Have you heard of a coven? Um, a coven. A coven, like a like a witch. There's several people. Yeah. Um, that that are part of that. Oh, so she was like a part of a group that that does stuff like this. So, so the way the Holy Spirit showed it to me is not that she was necessarily doing it herself because I don't think she was. I think she was more or less a novice, but she would pay for it oh. um, and you know have other people oh. you know perform you know the the rituals okay and that nature, but um. You know, even I mean, I can go into some. I actually put it all in the book, but yeah, there there's so many things that that happened. The reason why I said that I knew something was different about this particular time is because at all at all the times when my um, when this affair started, my ex husband and I we had just come back from a family trip to Canada for my birthday. Mm-hmm. Um, for my 40th birthday and um, just several months later is when the affair started with this strange woman and um, before the Holy Spirit um, allowed me to see it or to, to discover it um, they had already been in an intimate relationship almost a year and a half before wow. the Lord revealed it to me and the betrayal was that the the strange woman was um, a teacher in my daughter's elementary school, and so wow. she. Um, and I'm gonna tell you, when the devil wants to use 
and 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 he wants to inflict pain he plants people um specifically this strange woman was from my 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 area my my ta- hometown where I, I was raised she mm-hmm. wasn't from there originally I and mean, she's from new york originally but she lived in that area and i and i found out later that she even taught at the school that my middle son went to in that little town. And and it gets worse. My um, baby brother and her husband were close friends. Oh, my goodness. So not only <laughs> she was from this area uh, that I was from, but she had a connection with my, my brother, her husband, and then she moved to they moved to the area that we live in now and then she started teaching at my daughter's school and then um you know she started forming a relationship with my daughter who my daughter actually um you know was kind of gravitating to her because she's a fun you know she's a you know very lively and and fun person um, so, you know, kids, I think, gravitate to her, mm-hmm. but unbeknownst to me, I, you know, I, I would see her on field trips. She would see me at the school and, you know, she would laugh and smile and, you know, ha, ha, ha. But she was, you know, having, you know, dipping in your Kool-Aid. <laughs> yeah, and I'm like, I'm, and the whole time I was just like, and I was mad at God because I'm like, you, you have me looking like a fool, Lord. Right, exactly. <laughs> oh, my goodness. But like, I'm sitting here. She's smiling in my face. She's, you know, doing this. And she actually, like I said, was pretty likable. You know mm, what I mean? Like mm. a, a likable person. Like she just seen that. But, you know, as um, when the, the my spirit of discernment um, saw something that, that was just, like, different, I was like, she's trying too hard. Like, there's mm. something something's not right with this but i again the lord hid it from me yeah i tell you you weren't even, ready as a prophet i this thing could have turned out really really different yeah but, so he knew he knew when to when to, to let you it. know yeah wow so so let's let's um you know you don't have to go into it too long but so how did you find out like you said this was going on for like a year the other times that there was some infidelity, were they long relationships like this one? And then if not, or yes, how did you find out about it? So no. So that's how I knew that there was something, you know, different about this one. Um, because my my ex would do things that were outside of his character. Mm. When I say outside of his character, just things that he would just never do in general because he he was a very reserved person. So a lot of things he just didn't do. Um, but this person, and I, it's noteworthy to say, is also 10 years younger than my ex and I. So okay. you know, yeah. younger, you know how it is, you know, younger person, you're older. I was thinking, oh, well, maybe it's a midlife crisis. Or I don't know. Mm. But I knew something was different when you know, you know, he started growing out his hair and things of that nature. And then I realized that, you know, her ex-husband had long hair. So, you know, she was simply kind of making a replica, mm. you know, of her ex-husband, mm. um, you know, out of mine. And there was just other things that, you know, my my ex was never neglectful, really, of our of our of our um, children. I mean, there were some times, but not. Not to the extent that that he was when he got into this particular relationship, and just, I mean, just the, his decision making and judgment, and you know, all those things were really off. And mm. even before, you know, he would come to his senses and and you know, and still do what was right. Um, but but he had just became like blatantly um, disrespectful and. Mm. Um, mm. very hardened and very dark and mm. he had never been that way before even with the other times <laughs> he stepped out he wasn't like never, okay never been the way that he he was um you know when he was with her and um i, I mean just um just did that, 
did that play into your decision? Because to me, it, it sounds like like I've heard some people say, you know, especially men, if they mess around, that they don't love the other woman. Like they love you. You know, men can easily not all men, but men can easily engage in sex without necessarily having an attachment. But it kind of sounds like and you can correct me if I'm wrong. Those other things kind of sound more like flings, but this one sounds like he actually maybe really cared about this woman or maybe was even falling in love with her that it was not necessarily like about just a fling or anything like that. Do you do you see it that way or? No, no. It, okay. I, I'll tell you why. Mm -hmm. um, you know, after the discovery of the affair, um, you know, I asked him to leave and that began our official um, separation. Is that the um, first time you guys were separated or because I know you said there was stuff before, but have no, you we had been separated before, okay. but this, but again, when, when this happened, I, you know, there were some things that happened leading up to that point um, where I just asked him to leave. And um, I found out that, you know, he had been, you know, seeing her and, uh, by the way, she had only lived like five minutes away from where we were living. Mm -hmm. um, and so he had been, you know, kind of going over there or whatnot. But um, I, I would say like a year went by even after that, that separation. And he and I um, had, you know, come back together like husband and wife um, temporarily. Um, it was just a lapse of judgment, I believe. Mm -hmm. And, you know, and he had been, you know, seeing her so it wasn't like that because I think if you are truly committed to someone or, or love someone or whatever, you're not going to, why do you want to come back to, okay. you know, okay. to, your, to your wife? Okay. Um, okay. So it wasn't like that. It, this was, this was a more of a, oh, now I'm, I'm, I'm caught, I'm out here, you know, I, I better stay out here and, and, you know, cause I can't come back cause I've messed yeah. up. And it had messed, he had messed up so much that he had, um, you know, a very tumultuous relationship with our sons. Mm. Um, you know, it almost got physical um, a couple mm. of times. Um, wow. it, it had, it, you know, he had lost, um, you know, all respect from, you know, from our children. And, um, it, and it just, I think he felt, why well, I've gone too far now. And there's no real coming back from that. Okay. And at the so, time, um, it, his assumption would have been right. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> wow. Wow, I can't imagine. I know um, one time, um, and I've been married for uh, 14 years now, mm -hmm. and I thought I heard my husband on the phone talking to, I don't know who he was talking to, but his, mm -hmm. his voice sounded like, you know, it wasn't a professional mm -hmm. conversation. <laughs> And just from that, my heart was like beating so fast. I'm like, oh my goodness, he's talking to a woman. And I just felt like a rock was just in my stomach, in my throat. I mean, it was a terrible feeling. And I said, okay, who were you talking to? And he explained it. And I'm like, oh, you know, so that was just five minutes of thinking right. that something like right. that could happen. Right. And so I can't, I really can't imagine what it would feel like to not only find that out, but then to find out that it's been going on for like a year and a half. And then you're seeing all these changes. So now you can look back and say, oh, that's why you were doing that. That's why you were doing that. Like, oh my goodness. And like you said, you've been talking to the lady and it's humiliating. Like this lady was in my face and I, and she smiling in my face and knowing what she was doing behind my back. So I can't imagine that. I really, really can't imagine that. And so I'm curious as to how God helped you get through it, through that. But I really want to understand what was different. I mean, I know you kind of said it a little bit, but you said, okay. you know, witchcraft that got in, involved in the situation. He changed a lot more than he ever have, had before. He started neglecting things and stuff like that. So was that what made you say, that's it this time compared to the other times? Well, so no, so this is what, what actually um, happened. So I confronted, how I found out about it, uh, if we're being fully transparent here, um, I, I felt like uh, something was going wrong. So I put a GPS tracker mm -hmm. on my husband's car at the time. Mm -hmm. 
Mm. Um, and it was legal because we both owned the car. Mm -hmm. And um, he, had, he had said he was um, working late. And um, I didn't believe him, mm. of course. And when he actually got off on time, uh, he didn't come home. It was Father's Day um, of 2018. I'll, I'll never forget. It was Father's Day, and we were planning, um, you know, a dinner, um, you know, for him, um, the kids and I. But instead of, you know, coming straight home to us, he made a detour to meet this strange woman mm. at um, TGIF Fridays. Mm. Um, I had, uh, I saw that he made that, you know, that stop there. So I got in my vehicle. And I was just to about to ask you, I was going to say, did you go up I, to TGI Friday? I did. I did. And it, oh, it, my it, goodness. There. And, you know, to, to, to my dismay and to also to my surprise, um, he was sitting there with her um, eating dinner. Mm. And so, you know, I actually recorded the, you know, the encounter. Mm. And, and I was really kind of heartbroken because, again, this is was this was a person in my in my child's school, mm. um, and this was a person who would you know smile in my face. So it's not like she didn't know he was married. So anyway, I had a conversation with her while he was there, and I asked her a series of questions, and I asked her how long has she been you know, engaged in um, a sexual relationship with my, with my husband. Mm -hmm. and, um, you know, she lied to me. She told me um, that they were just friends. And, um, and she said that she was under the impression that he was separated. Mm. And that, that made it better that mm. he was separated, um, that she was under the impression he was separated and that, um, you know, they were just friends. Um, but so she didn't even have the integrity mm. to be honest and tell me the truth. Now this, now this is what, what kind of, you know, kind of, um, um, proved my point. I asked her, um, did she know he was living at home with me? And then she's acting like she was shocked she said to him really and she called his name she said really and she looked like she was really you know in shock that he was living at home as if now mind you i was deployed i was deployed uh to puerto rico okay. um, working on a, on a on a emergency response so i had been gone for several months so obviously, it would seem like he was separated because okay. I wasn't there. Okay. Um, but the point is that, you know, at that time of the encounter, she, instead of her being honest and, and being woman to woman, she um, she lied. Mm. And, um, and, you know, and she never, she never owned it until after... Uh, and I didn't file for the divorce, by the way. I want that to be clear. Um, okay. My, my ex filed for the divorce on um, September 13th, 2019. And, um, and I think it was, you know, at her, um, at her request um, mm. for him to, you know, to do that. Mm. Now, shortly after that, when you talk about how did I know about the witchcraft and all, I got a, I received um, a series of, um, Facebook Messenger um, uh, text text messages from the strange woman's mother. I'd never met this woman before in my life. I, if she, you know, at that time, if I saw her, I wouldn't know her. She came and slapped me upside the head. Mm. I just didn't know. Um, but she inboxed me, and she, um, you know, said all these terrible things, and she told me that I need to move on. Um, and, you know, leave her daughter alone and not worry about what my, my husband, because we, we were still married at the time, mm. uh, was doing with her and that I need to worry about the two-year-old child that my, my husband supposedly had with someone else, um, while he was still with me and then subsequently, 
um, dealing with uh, with her daughter. Um, mm. She also said that, you know, she kind of taunted that, you know, you're getting a divorce. Stop calling him your husband. He's with my daughter now. Oh, my goodness. He doesn't, you, um, he doesn't want you. You know, she would say things like, you're old. You're, um, you know, and, and, and so this is this woman's mother. So the woman is already immoral, unethical, um, and illegal, counterfeit. But her mother is 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 bashing me too. And then her cousin um, sends me a message, kind of the same thing. And the oh my same, goodness, what is you, going on? And then her sister posts on um, on Facebook that she was going to physically assault me. And now this is all these things are the family. Coming from this this strange woman's family. And you know, and the irony is—is is that when, is that her first name? Is her first name strange? Because every time you mention her, you say the strange woman. Well, I, I, you know, I'm not insulting her because the the Bible says that the Bible calls her a strange woman. Yeah, she's an adulteress, and the Bible yeah. says that you know it warns Solomon warns in in Proverbs not to follow the strange woman because it would lead to your destruction. Right. So, so I call I, her a strange woman because the strange woman knew that she was um, engaged with a married man and she did not care. Mm, she was mm. absolutely okay with it um, because, you know, she had engaged him using um, uh, demonic power. So, yeah, um, I mean, I think that's a good point. And I kind of brought that out jokingly. But my mm -hmm. point is that this is in the bible like this the the, the bible yeah. depicts this specific type of woman that kind yeah. of lures men into their own destruction and things like right. that and so that's why you were saying the strange woman i was just trying to be funny about it but but yeah, yeah so go ahead <laughs> and now and, I, and you know and i i engaged the strange woman because um I engaged her because at the end of the day, she's still a soul. Yeah, exactly. And, exactly. You know, and, and irrespective of, of, you know, of what has happened or transpired in, in, in my marriage and my relationship, the Bible says that, you know, God is not mocked. We reap what we sow. Exactly. So I, I don't have a heaven or hell to put her in. So that's mm -hmm. not my place, mm -hmm. you know, to judge her. Um, I'm sure I was angry, you know, at, you know, her contributions and, 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 and the things that happened, but as a, um, a, but as a prophet and as a woman of God, I always still cared for her soul mm -hmm. and I engaged her in that way. I, I, I tried to reason with her and ask her if she really understood, you know, the consequences of her actions in terms mm -hmm. of. Um, you know, dealing with someone who's married. And I explained to her that, you know, um, you know, I, I'm sent to my, my husband, you know, to, to help lead him to Christ. And you're, you're leading him, you know, astray. Mm. And he's leading you astray because, you know, you both are, um, you know, are doing this without any, any sort of, um, you know, repentance or, or, or sorrow or godly sorrow or conviction. Um, you just think it's okay. And so mm -hmm. they try to justify, um, you know, their actions instead of repent, they, they justified. And even to this day, I mean, she, um, you know, you know she went, she, um, uh, persuaded my ex to try to get custody, you know, of, of my um, children. Um, so are they, are they, are they still together? Uh, Yes, yes. They well, as far as I know, they they live together. Um, mm -hmm. They live together, so you know they, you know they went on and um, and did some some things together after the fact. Um, you know, after everything was over. I mean, the our divorce was final March twenty fifth, two thousand twenty one. So I mean, what they do at this point, you know, that's it's just. Not then yeah got, yeah yeah right? so so your your husband is the one that filed the divorce which you are right. saying was at her sounds like at her beckoning or whatever mm -hmm. and since you guys have been divorced he has stayed he's still with this lady 
Yeah, they're still, they're wow. still, but the thing is, remember, this started um, around, I'd say, September, October of 2016. Mm-hmm. So this has been ongoing, but you, you know the thing about soul ties? Mm-hmm. When you become tied to, to a person, you know, spiritually, even if you wanted to leave, it's hard. Yeah, It's very yeah. difficult to leave a a situation that you don't want to be in, but yeah. um, it's very clear the spirit of the Lord has shown me that um, I don't think either one of them, you know, want to be in that situation. And and that's good because, you know, that's my prayer is that, you know, yeah. that they would, you know, come to the acknowledgement of their, of their ways. And then, you know, the, that the Lord will um, forgive them, that they would, yeah. repent, and the Lord will forgive them. Exactly. So now you talked a little bit about before about, you know, how this affected your children. So I think that's a really important part. Like the top, the topic of the show is the destruction of adultery. And so Mm -hmm. it's clear how it kind of destroyed you guys' relationship, especially Mm -hmm. over time. Um, Mm -hmm. And so how did it, and then you talked a little bit about um, how he almost became, um, got into some physical confrontations with your son. Can you talk about how this whole thing um, affected your children? Well, yeah. So the night after um, the confrontation at uh, on Father's Day, um, that was the same night that we subsequently said, you got to go. Okay. Out. And okay. Um, my ex, um, you know, at the time had my, my uh, oldest son um, was home from college. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, my middle son, they all were awakened by, you know, the, the, the loud what you know, was going on. Yeah. And, and, and all of that. Mm. And um, I think my, my ex had said something um, to, to the effect like, she deserved it or something like that. And I mm. believe that set my oldest son off. Mm. Um, and, and he was very um, angry. Mm. I mean, fiercely angry. I've never seen my, my oldest son that angry before in, in his entire life. And he's, mm. he's 22 years old. And so, mm. um, so he was hurt. Yeah. So it was obvious that he was hurt. Mm. Um, that that happened. So uh, all those things, and then my and then my middle son and and every everybody was just really hurt. Um, mm. My daughter especially because you know she felt the betrayal from several different aspects. She felt it from her the teacher, from the teacher, and that mm. and that the teacher had you know in in, in my daughter's mind had used her mm. to get closer to her father. So. She felt betrayal from that perspective, mm. um, and also my my daughter had been going through some some um, bullying at school as a result of my ex um, husband and this teacher's you know behavior at school. So wow, wow, it was, it was on so many different levels, and then it the thing is it it just it just got progressively worse, um, you know, over time because my my ex never really apologized he never really um dealt with the situation it just i think it had exacerbated to the point where he didn't know how to Mm -hmm. and um, and because he kept doing things and then um like over the summer like he completely abandoned um you know our our children like yeah because she's a teacher she would have summers off so he would go entire summers and not see our our children. Wow. And I mean, he would be very infrequent. Um, he would show up to like all of the, um, you know, the big things for the photo op and, and things of that nature, but he would not be around consistently. And so it was just me and the kids, um, mm. you know, kind of kind of going, well, me, the kids and, and, and the Lord. I'm um, going through this process. Um, you know, my daughter was in, you know, counseling and therapy. Um, there was a lot of things that wow. were happening. Wow. 
Oh, I can't even imagine. Wow. <laughs> so, so now how do we get to the healing part and the forgiveness part? Cause I, I can, you've already kind of said some of that stuff already, you know, your perspective about her and him, which of course the average person would not feel that way. Like, Oh, I still want him to be saved. I still want them both to come to the Lord. Um, even Christians will say, forget them. Like, you know, I hope they burn in hell. But, um, <laughs> So I can tell even from the things that you've said that you have had, you have walked through some healing and forgiveness of your own because they both kind of walk hand in hand with this whole situation. So can you talk about that a little bit? Oh, absolutely. Um, You know, I I needed to say that, you know, first of all, I'm not a victim. My children, we're not victims. We, um, you know, we were collateral damage and, you know, in a game that was being played you know, with our lives and we didn't ask to play. Mm. We didn't ask to play those games. Mm. But I will say that, you know, by the grace of God, actually by the mercy of God, I had a a serious issue with anger. Um, Mm. I I would, um, if I can be completely transparent, um, you know, I'm like Peter, you know, you know, I'll be the one cutting your ear off. Mm. Um, I've had to go through some reformation. Um, <laughs> I have that, you know, that, that I had that, you know, and when I say that, I mean, just, I, it, it wasn't really that it was, it was me. It was, I think it was pinned up aggression. It was just bottled up things that, you know, had happened over and over and over again. And mm. I would be mad that I would, I forgave him. Yeah, I was mm. like, I forgave him for all these things. Mm. Does this again. But it wasn't until the Lord started opening up my spiritual eyes, because like I said before, the Lord is close to the brokenhearted and he saves those who are crushed in spirit. So Mm. if you are broken, right, you're all the way low. There is only one place to look. And that's Mm. up. Mm. That's where I had to do. I had to look up and I had to, you know, I had to cry and, 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 and fight to not be bitter. Mm. That's a battle within itself. Mm. I said, I, I, I'm not going to let the enemy um, cause me to be bitter and to forsake everything that God has done for me. I stopped taking my eyes off of what I didn't have mm. and I stopped putting my eyes back on what I did have. Mm. I said, God, I, I, I developed an attitude of gratitude. I said, Lord, I thank you. I thank you because you kept me from danger seen and unseen because mm. I didn't know what I was getting into and mm. you kept me from danger seen and unseen. I could have, with that spirit of anger that I was dealing with, I could have murdered them both mm. because of because of the, the, the level of deceit and deception. Mm. And had it not been for the mercy of God and the grace of God, they would not be here today. Wow. They would not be here today. And, and, wow. and God started showing me. And again, he I had to go back. God never brings up our, our past sins, especially when we've repented and mm-hmm. you know when we've given it to him. You know, mm-hmm. he goes to the sea of forgetfulness, never to remember it anymore. Mm-hmm. But what I found was I I would recall like, God, you've been so good to me. You know, you forgave me for this, you forgave me for that, you forgave me for this. And then I began to realize, well, I I, I gotta forgive them. I mm. gotta forgive them. It's not for them as mm. much as it is for me. Exactly. I'm being hindered because I'm holding on to unforgiveness because I just can't I can't reconcile what they did and and and, and without any um, repentance, without any conviction, without any sorrow, without any apologies. Yeah, that's hard. Man. And then I got to the point where I said, well, I don't even need the apologies now. You know, I don't even care because mm. God had bound up those wounds mm. so much that I began to see them with new eyes. Mm. I began to see them for who they were. And mm. I began to see that, you know, they're actually hurting um, worse than I am. Yeah, because you've got to be in such pain to want to inflict that type of pain on some on another. Hurting people hurt others. Exactly. And God showing me, 
there, he started showing me how he saw them. Mm -hmm. And when he started showing me how he saw them, I began to, he filled my heart with compassion Mm -hmm. and he filled my heart with love and he filled my heart with a desire to see them uh, um, healed and to see them because when I began to pray for them and I began to um, to say, Lord, you know, I, I'm just going to do what your word says. You said to love your enemies. You said mm. to bless those who curse you. Do good to those who despitefully use you. I said, so I'm just going to start doing that. Mm. Because if I start doing that, then I, your, because your word will never return into you void and you hold it higher than you hold your own name, this has to work. Mm. And so when I started going down on my knees and asking God for to forgive me, forgive me for all this pent up aggression and stuff that I never talked about. Forgive me for all of that. And, and, and I just want to be in right standing with you. Just create in me a clean heart and renew a right spirit within me. You know, I have mm. to, to fight not mm. to be bitter. And so I began to pray and I began to call the strange woman's name out. Mm. I began to call my ex name out and i said mm. lord forgive them for mm. they know not what they do mm. and i began to start to intercede like they were my friends yeah. <laughs> for them like they're my friends i'm like god I'm, I'm interceding for them but at the time i it was it was so um i, I didn't know it it was like it unconsciously i i i did that because no matter what they did, they still were a living soul. And I don't care how much they did, I would never want them to see see either one of them perish and, mm. and be separated from God at eternity. For eternity. Exactly. Because I knew that, that they were redeemable. Mm. I knew mm. that they were redeemable. Even even with all the you know witchcraft and all that stuff, I knew that they were redeemable and I knew mm. that God still loved them. And I mm. knew that God could could to turn their hearts to him. Mm. And so I said, you know what? God, don't let me be in your way. You might be just teaching me and trying to trying to work out trust in me, basically um, extending trust to me to say, will you actually obey my word? Mm. Because I'm going to mm. hold you accountable. They don't know me. Mm. You do. Mm. 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 They don't know me. Who's going to pray for them? Exactly. I was thinking that like they probably don't even have anybody else to pray for them. And, and I think, go ahead. Go ahead. No, no, you say, go. And, and this, when they are, um, here, here's the deal. When they're praying to God, whoever God they're praying to, and I'm praying to God, God got to be looking up. He ain't got to be looking down and saying, well, which one is my child? Mm. Because if I'm acting like them, my God, if I'm acting like them, if I'm not doing anything that the word says, Jesus said, if you love me, you will keep my commandments. Mm. So if I'm, if I'm, if I'm acting like them, if I'm acting like the son of the, the devil or the daughter of the devil, why, why would God answer my prayers? Mm. Mm. He's looking down. He's like, which one is my child? <laughs> which one is my child which one of y'all look like me Cause yeah, which, one, me. which one look like me I mean mm. I know you say mm. you say mm. that you know you're my child you know I know God's like let me get a DNA test let me see <laughs> my child because I'm not seeing it based on your actions you're not mm. doing you're not, you're not showing forth the love of Christ mm. to those who have who have hurt you and I tell you, God asks a lot of us because when I see my baby, so you can do whatever you want to do to me. I, mm. I'm a fighter. I'm mm. gonna be okay. Mm. But the moment you start touching my children, I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm probably gonna. I don't know what I'm gonna do, but I <laughs> that was hard to. That was hard to put aside, and then go before the Father. Yeah. I mean, I, of course I haven't been in that situation, but I can imagine I've been in some situations where I've had to, it was took a lot for me to forgive. And it really, basically what you said, cause I know there's some people that are watching, like they could never forgive and they, they hold on to it. But when you see 
and that's if you're real with yourself and you have a relationship with God, when you see where that unforgiveness is taking you in your mind, in your heart, and how it's putting a barrier between you and God and how you don't feel the same, you don't feel like yourself, you don't think like yourself, you're not acting like yourself, you're not happy. Like all of these things, it just opens the doorway to all of these things. And so in, in my experience, it's almost like, I'm I'm going to forgive because I see what it's doing to me. Like, I don't want to go that way. I don't want to go down that route. And you know, if you keep going that way, it's just going to get worse and worse. It doesn't get better. You don't say, yeah, oh, I was mad yesterday, but I'm not today. And, you know, you just keep, it's, it's like your mind finds things to be mad about even more because you're already upset. And it just is a, it's a, a, a bad cycle. And so, for me, when I saw where I was going, how unhappy I was, how my it was even difficult for me to bring my thoughts back to God's word because it's like, forgive, like, but what about the, you know, then I'm like, okay, you know, I need to, I need to do something really quick here because I felt my spirit declining, if I should can mm-hmm. say that. And so you, you kind of, for me, and I know it's basically kind of what it sounds like you're saying is like, you bring yourself to a place of forgiveness for yourself it's like i have to let this go and forgiveness is the only way to get there it's not like you can be okay and then still be mad at them like you have to forgive them and then that kind of helps you to start uh, moving towards healing and stuff for yourself and so it's really difficult um but it's always worth it like once i'm sure once you like you said you had to fight not to be bitter once you were able to gradually move away from that, it was probably like, and you can kind of explain it yourself, like, you know, a, a, um, relief, you know what I'm saying? Like, how well, did it, was it like that for you or? Well, healing doesn't start until you forgive. Yeah. And it's important to, and it's important to um, recognize that, that healing is not a feeling. Mm. Healing is a, I mean, I'm sorry, forgiveness is not a, a, a feeling. It's forgiveness a is a choice. Yeah. Forgiveness says that, that, you know, when you say the father's prayer and, um, and the Lord's prayer and you say, you know, our father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come. Mm-hmm. And then you get to that part and you say, forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against, forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. You don't really want God to forgive you the way you say you forgive people mm. because you kind of wishy-washy with your forgiveness. I mean, mm. you, I forgive you today and I'm mad at you tomorrow. No, mm. forgiveness is not a feeling. Forgiveness mm. is a choice. What mm. you're saying is I'm going to forgive because if one, it, God told me to, it's the yeah. right to do right mm, mm. and then I, I gotta free not only myself but you also gotta free your offender mm. so you you say that you want god to show your offender mercy right but do you really because mm. if you really want god to show your offender mercy then you wouldn't be holding on to it because you holding that on over their head mm. instead of you relinquishing it so the holy spirit can do what he did in you to get you to that place because the holy spirit is the only one that changes the hearts of man so you need the holy spirit to go and speak to them exactly like spoke to you mm. so you have to for, forgiveness is a choice and that moment that you decide that i'm going to forgive i ain't gonna be bitter because it takes a lot of time and effort to be Look. bitter a lot of energy, yeah. a lot of peace. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So mm. you have to say, I'm going to forgive and forgiveness. I'm going to forgive so that I can heal and mm. I'm going to heal and live. I'm going to forgive and I'm going to live because when God heals me, then w- sometimes God will heal you to a point where it's like it never even happened. I know right that now, very well. <laughs> yeah. I feel like the things that they've done, I can only recall these things because I had got uh, gave me a, a recollection of it for the book and to also help some other people. Because when they hear all the things that actually happened, they're like, how in the world? Like, you, that got to be God for you to even, mm. you know, still want. But if the strange woman came up and she was hungry, I would feed her. If mm. she needed something, I would give it to her. And I'm telling you, that that's only by 
um, the grace of God. The, the grace of God. Because mm-hmm. before that, I, she might have came up and she probably would have left with a couple black eyes. I'm just saying that's just how <laughs> that's how I felt. But no, tell I, the I, truth. Guess that's that's what people need to hear. Like, okay, yeah. like let's be real because you can't yeah. get from. Z to A, if if nobody's telling you all the steps that it takes to get there, so hey, tell it, yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. I'm gonna tell you. I'm telling you. I, when I tell you, I was Peter. I was Peter. I was ready to throw those hands. I'm a prophet, so let's not get it twisted. Let's not get it twisted. But I was ready to throw hands, and oh, I man. would have thrown hands, and I would have gone. I'm telling you. I'm just that is that's. God made me a fighter. When mm. I go before in prayer, I travail. Mm. I, I don't I don't let up. I don't give the devil no room because mm. I'm 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 a fighter. He made mm. me a fighter for a reason, but there's a way to, to fight. fight. Exactly. exactly. She is not my enemy. Exactly. As much as Satan wanted me to say that this woman is your enemy. No, she's not my enemy. You mm. are my enemy. She's mm. not my enemy. You got you blinded her just like you blinded him. Mm. You are my enemy. Mm. They are not my enemy. Mm. Mm. So I'm not going to sit up here and hold all of this in because of some things that that you persuaded them to do. Mm. Mm. Yeah, well, you, you used her her issues in childhood. Exactly. Belonging. Her, exactly. her 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 insecurities you use that exactly you use that and you caused her to want to go and, and 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 place all this emphasis on materialism and all this stuff because she is empty on the inside you exactly. did that exactly but i know who i am and i know she don't have to feel that way she don't mm. have to maybe she wouldn't have 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 entertained a relationship with my husband if she had been whole mm. but i said you see what Satan did was he made me mad. Mm. He made me. He he made me. I was fifty eight hot, and 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 I initially it started off with them fifty eight hot with them, but then I became fifty eight hot with him, mm. and I said I'd be dog off. You ain't about to let. I'm not. If I have to scream it from the rooftops, if there's somebody out here who a strange man, because 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 you know it's my situation because I'm a woman and it was my husband, but it could be. A man, you know, um, uh, you know, a uh, woman man is, mm. you know, is being entertained by a strange men. So it's not, it's not just these are not synonymous. These are synonymous. So mm. what I'm saying is, I said to God, the Lord, if you heal me, if you heal me, I will tell the world, I will scream on the rooftops about your goodness, your grace, and how you are faithful to restore and you're faithful to do it like it never happened. Mm. And I will forgive those and I will speak so that if there's a strange man, if there's a strange woman that's considering it or even in a relationship right now with mm. someone that they have, that they can have the power, they can be encouraged to say, ah, this is not a God. I'm done. I'm, I'm exactly. a God. And I said, I'm going to give Satan some black eyes in his kingdom, what he's trying to do is destroy the, the God's um, desire for families and homes yeah. and things of that nature. Not on my watch. Mm. Yeah, I might have lost my husband to 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 that, you know. And God's still writing a story, so we don't even know how that turns out. Exactly. But my is that that I may have lost that that uh, I, I would say that fight per se, but I didn't lose the war. Exactly. Exactly. So, wow. So yeah. let me ask you um, really quickly, because we do need to start wrapping this up soon. I'm sure we could probably talk about this for hours. Yeah. But so if you're if your husband had not filed, do you think you would have forgiven him again like you did before? Like, do you think you would have? Um. No, because at that time. So so we separated physically um, in June. Um, uh, 29th I think of uh, 2018 we separated well we separated but he came back and then we separated again so we separated in June of 2018 and then um, in 2019 you know we came back together and then uh, he filed in, in September of 2019 so I think I would have um, required something more because at that point 
remember God had already started opening up my eyes through visions and things and he started mm -hmm. showing me things. So I wouldn't have um, just forgiven. Well, I would have forgiven him, but I wouldn't have reconciled so quickly the like I did in the past. I wouldn't okay. have required some things. To some have. more evidence that he actually had a change of heart. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So how is you, how is everything today? So we're, this happened some years ago. You talked about how it affected your children. Um, it basically destroyed his relationship with his kids, destroyed you guys' relationship. Um, and so fast forward into the future, how, how are things now? How do you communicate with him now? Because you guys still have kids, so you have to communicate. And then how is the kids and his relationship now? Well, actually, the, the, the relationship between the kids is still strained. Um, our relationship, um, even, you know, we don't we don't communicate a lot. And a lot of that really has to do with there's still, you know, some, still some immaturity going on. OK, that nature. And um, my daughter, um, she wants nothing to do with the strange okay. one. She loves her father. Okay. But she doesn't want to have anything to do with a uh, strange woman. So she doesn't even uh, want to like go to his house. So she, you know, she would spend time with her father, but she, she doesn't even want to be in the presence. Mm. And that has worn on her psychologically, um, emotionally. She's It, it has really um, hurt her. Um, you, sometimes but yeah i say beyond measure so um I, I don't think you know i don't know where their relationship is headed but um i know for a fact that my daughter wants nothing to do with her so that that you know that with that said that's been very um strained and then our um sons they don't they i mean they talk you know, very infrequently. Um, mm. He has been, you know, lately, um, you know, coming around a little bit uh, more, you know, uh, going to um, watch our middle son's game and, you know, and, and, and trying to do a little bit better. So I think that, you know, the Lord is speaking to him in, 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 in some ways, but I, I don't know, you know, to the extent of that. Um, yeah, yeah. As far as as far as you know as like the old uh church folks say are all hearts and mind clear well you know you know my heart my mind is clear off of this as far as i'm concerned you know i won't um ever you know try to bash him or anything what i'm doing i'm simply telling i'm telling the story yeah 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 i'm telling the story but i'm telling it under this disclaimer i hold nothing against you know my ex-husband I love my ex-husband. He is the father of my children. Um, I, yeah, I spent I, a lot of years together. Yeah. And, 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 and barring all the other stuff, he, he's a good man. So mm. I, he, he, he's a good man who has made some very poor judgment um, decisions. Um, and, you know, and again, under the influence of, of, um, of, of the wrong influences. So, mm. I say that to say this, um, that, you know, it's, it's a work in progress. God is still in control. Um, we, you know, we'll just have to see what happens. You know, my goal, um, is that, you know, there will be, you know, a reconciliation, um, between the kids for sure, because, um, I think children need both their, their parents, their mother and their father. So mm -hmm. I do hope for some sort of, um, you know, restoration there. Um, I, I think too that um, it, it'll be difficult, but um, it not impossible. Mm. Not impossible. Mm -hmm. Well, I've seen God change some some situations that you would never think would could turn. So He definitely can do it, and uh, He doesn't do it as fast as we want it done. But He knows how to do it. He knows how to communicate with people, and. Um, I pray the same thing. You know, I, I, I agree with you about kids having their parents. And um, and I, I do feel very, very sorry for your daughter because this is her teacher. Like, it's one thing that it's her dad that's bad enough, but then it's a teacher that she actually liked and she felt used by the teacher. Like, you know, that's that's pretty bad. Um, so, yeah, I, I, I stand in prayer with you on that one. So, yeah. Well, the trust issues, I, and, 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 
I'm going to say this last thing is that, you know, forgiveness um, doesn't necessarily necessitate, um, you know, reconciliation. Mm. For reconciliation mm -hmm. to happen, there must be repentance. Exactly. So I, I don't think my, my children will, will ever um, accept, you know, the strange woman. So I think that's a consequence. Mm. I think sometimes that's a consequence of, of, of our actions and, and that's just a consequence. But I do believe that they have forgiven her and they have forgiven um, their father. Okay. So, and I teach them that because you know because they are um, they are children of God, so they they need to forgive as well. But I just think that um, as far as any type of you know reconciliation or anything like that, I think um, true repentance um, must uh, happen before you know there's even any semblance of that. Yeah, agreed. Agreed. So uh, we go ahead and wrap this up. We have went pretty significantly over the time. <laughs> so, yeah, but, you know, if anybody's interested in watching, I know sometimes if I go too far of the time, the chances of people watching like the whole thing kind of get shorter and shorter. But I feel like the, the things that we're discussing and for the people who really need to hear this, you know, they can watch the parts that they need to, that God leads, leads them to watch because they needed to hear it. So, mm -hmm. uh, but before we... Um, check out you guys go to uh, Rhonda Rhonda's web website where she has um, the email address I mean I'm sorry the web address is here at the bottom of the screen I will also put this um, in the comments so you guys can check her out of her website and you can also find her on Facebook which will also be at the bottom of the screen and don't forget about her book coming out next year um, all about this and more than what we just talked about counterfeit covenant and Rhonda, did you want to let everybody else know anything else you have coming up or what you're doing and things of that nature? Yes, yes, yes. So I have, um, the Lord has opened up the door where I will um, have a 26 episode, a 26, 30 minute episode um, that will be broadcasted globally all across the world on various channels. Um, Christian networks and also on on demand um, beginning uh, Sundays at 10 30 a.m. and um, I'll put that out in terms of the uh, the, the channel in which you, you uh, or the channels in which you can catch it and the platforms in which you can catch it but the, the show is called counterfeit covenant um, I've also received some invitations um, to uh, speak at some 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 churches, some ministries um, on counterfeit covenant as well, and, and also some churches have uh, reached out to live stream um, the the counterfeit covenant because adultery, um, you know, in the church um, is is a really big challenge, and mm. you know, people are really um, their marriages that are trying to determine whether or not they want to stay together. And, and so this, hopefully this message of hope mm. um, will, will help uh, some make the decisions to, 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 to um, fight for their families um, and, and, and really, um, you know, stay uh, in covenant with God. Mm. Amen. Amen. So thank you so much for your story and your time. I look forward to your book coming out. And also um, the information that you were saying about the the show and the times and the channel, you can find that out on your website or on I will, Facebook. I, I will post it on uh, on my website. I'm actually going to send you the information and the okay. links and stuff. Um, I'll be recording um, my first episode, um, first episode here next week, uh, next week, the 22nd um, okay. of November. So. Okay. And the show will be aired um, that following Sunday at 1030. Okay. So when you pass me that information, you guys keep an eye out for it. I will post it on my page. And I look forward to seeing how the, all this unfolds for you. When your book come out, I will definitely be buying a copy 